Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we're going to talk about web comics. We're going to talk about Webtoon. We're going to talk about Twitter. We're going to talk about why you need to probably think about having your own website. Uh, why you need to think about hosting your own stuff going forward, that we're going to roll the internet back to 2005 out of necessity. Uh, you know, uh, mostly this video is going to be about web, uh, web comics creators, webtoon creators not being very happy with the payment arrangement over on webtoon. But this actually goes along with the stuff we've been talking about with Twitter, where people are, uh, you know, angry that Twitter is charging now. Uh, people are saying they're going to leave the platform, but they don't know where to go. Um, and I've talked about this multiple times, that the old internet was very different than the internet of today. Today, there are free hosting options, uh, social media, which is basically free hosting, but you are the product, as a lot of people pointed out. And, you know, what happens is sometimes these companies aren't profitable and they have to pull the plug on posting for whatever reason. Sometimes they have incentives to get people to start posting on the platform and then they take those incentives away for whatever reason. And uh, we're gonna see the internet be a lot less incentivized for individual creators to post content unless you're already big, unless you've already got some kind of a following, then you'll probably get deals and whatnot. But let's talk about all this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and Rants guys, over 280, 281,000 subs. Thank you for this support. Uh, we do talk about comics. Uh, speaking of comics, check out Crimson Wren. We're going to be closing that out in like a week on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. We're at almost $100,000, which is so weird because we had some random webcomics person <laughs> was like, oh my God, the people, the people that have Clownfish TV. Yes, they did the mediocre Shadowbinders webcomic back in the day. And I guess it's a better grift to just bitch about stuff on YouTube. Actually, YouTube is harder uh, than web comics. It's harder to get seen on YouTube. It really is, uh, you know, but <laughs> anyway, that's fine. We were on hiatus for eight years. We did a prequel and we're doing just fine. We're going to keep publishing comics. And I'm sorry. And I asked him how his web comic was. I didn't get a response. I think I got blocked, but that's okay. So here's the deal, right? Going forward, whether it's Twitter or whatever, because Twitter, they're talking, they might lose billions of dollars. They might go bankrupt next year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pay to play going forward out of necessity. The ad rates are terrible. Old Head should be familiar with this. It used to cost to host your own website. It used to cost to support sites through subscriptions, donations, and merch sales. Webcomics, people were doing it that way back in the late 90s, early 2000s, paying to host their own website. Sometimes these sites got tons and tons of traffic. And the hosting bills were through the roof before we um, went to Keenspot with Shadowbinders. And we were, I mean, we were heavily trafficked, but we weren't like the biggest thing out there. We weren't like, you know, XKCD or anything like that. But we still had pretty decent traffic and we were paying $300, $500 a month, I think, for hosting back then. And then we went to Keenspot and they, they picked up the tab for the hosting and our traffic blew up, but they had, you know, their own infrastructure and it was probably cheaper for them anyway. But, um, yeah, people are going to have to start doing that because the internet is going to start taking away. Uh, the internet is going to start taking things away. And what kind of kicked this off was what's going on with webtoon. I haven't really been paying attention. I know webtoon has been doing a lot of promotion lately because, you know, they've had success with war Olympus and some of their Korean series being uh, turned into anime. But creators aren't happy. So apparently Webtoon took away the uh, Canvas support program, the Creator Rewards program. Now, a little bit of history with Webtoon. We were there when Webtoon first came to the U.S. 
uh, I think it was, I want to say 2014, it was around 2013, 2014. They were trying desperately to get people to post content on the site because people were not uh, trusting a site because everybody was so used to hosting their own stuff, right? So they're like, well, they're from Korea. Um, there was some drama about creator rights and that, that sort of thing going around. And people were very leery about posting on Webtoon and they were trying to explain to people, it's like, hey, it's basically like YouTube, but for comics. Eventually it worked out, but to get people to post, they had to bribe them. I remember they had to bribe people. They had contests and they were uh, paying creators to bring their comics there exclusively. And then they had uh, a rewards program. Now this might be different than the one we were in. They basically would give you extra money in your Patreon every month if you hit certain page view goals. This is before they did the ad revenue share. So we would pick up because we weren't exclusive with Webtoon. So for Shadowbinders, you know, at the time we were picking up an extra thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month just running reruns over on Webtoons. I mean, I was so lazy. I wasn't even like reformatting the comic for Webtoon or anything. I was just like dumping pages over there because I'm like, it's, you know, I don't want to reformat the whole comic. I'm going to spend more time trying to reformat it than drawing new pages. But it was a pretty good program. And then I know people were paid, uh, you know, just to post directly, they were hiring like Marvel DC creators, which I think was kind of a wrong approach to, to get a Western web comic audience, but they, they brought people in, they were paying them a few thousand dollars a month, I think to put their comic over there, but they're ending it and people are pissed. And then we've got another creator uh, pulling her comic off of Webtoon. I guess it was pretty popular, but she's complaining about the payment over there too. So this is coming from CBR Webtoon canvas creators. Uh, artists are furious over removal of creator rewards program. Webtoon will end its creator rewards program in January 2023, which means an end to a reliable source of income for many creators. Uh, Webtoon's termination of the creator rewards program is putting many creators who are already finding it challenging to earn a fair wage in the industry in financial crisis. A notice was sent by Webtoon notifying its canvas creators the creator's reward program will end in January 2023. A tipping system will replace the program, but the platform did not divulge details as to when they would implement the system or what it would look like, leaving many creators in a state of financial limbo. The announcement was met with anger and frustration by many creators whose income largely comes from the program. Uh, so this is Paige Critchlow. Critchlow. Webtoon just announced that it is gutting one of the only semi-reliable uh, forms of income for Canvas creators. Guess they aren't quite finished with their bad PR speed run this year. This news is incredibly frustrating and disappointing. Uh, to be clear, this is a direct pay cut to their top creators on Canvas who were already not being fairly compensated enough for the value they bring to the company. They could be improving the platform artist relationship, but now they consistently choose not to. Uh, man, they're just going on and on. Hey, Webtoon and Canvas and Webtoon Official, either of you want to hop in and address this? Probably not. Or we fully mask off with how little the company actually cares about the value of the craft and the artists who make it. They don't care. You're just content. I'm sorry, Paige. They, they really don't. Most of these companies don't care about the individual artists. They look at the bottom line. How many page views are we bringing in? Uh, how much ad revenue are we bringing in? And can we monetize this content beyond? Could, or did, did we find another Laura Olympus? You know, uh, the same artists who helped build your platform to begin with. We have been telling people, God, we've been telling people this. We've been telling people this for years. And they're like, Clownfish TV is so negative. What the hell? What's up with Clownfish? Yeah, Webtoon, I kind of had a problem with uh, because they were basically using Western art artists to build the numbers on the platform. And then they started bringing the Korean stuff over and the Korean stuff was what was put front and center uh, in, in terms of the Hollywood deals, because that's what their end goal was, was we're going to bring. It was basically a Trojan horse. And I don't blame them. They're a company. They got to turn a profit. I, I get it. But the Western Webtoon platform was a Trojan horse to bring Korean IP to America to get Hollywood deals. There are a couple, a couple of Western webtoons that were very, very big and they did get deals like Laura Olympus. But Laura Olympus is like the Michael Jordan of web, like that's not gonna happen again for most people. Uh, between Twitch saying 
F you and refusing to do a 70-30 profit split and taking away the 70-30 split for partners who already had it. And Webtoon saying we're not even going to pay Canvas creators anymore. 2022 is really the year of kicking indie content creators in the gut. <sighs> you have to own your shit. You have to build your own platform. This is how we used to do it. You cannot depend on these companies for whatever reason. You cannot depend on them to take care of you. But people want to be taken care of. And I'm not kicking people when they're down. I'm being very clear about this. But there's an entire generation of content creators that have had it, in my opinion, entirely too easy. If you wanted to have a presence on the internet back in the day, you had to build your own site. You had to pay to market your site. You had to build your audience. You had to somehow convince your audience to give you money, whether it's through merchandise or through subscriptions or something. You had to give value. All these websites that these journalists have been squatting on were built by somebody else. And they got sold to corporations. And at the end of the day, the corporations, especially now with the recession and the, you know tech crumbling, they're looking at the situation and they're like, damn, we are spending more money in hosting then we're making an ad revenue on probably 99% of these comics. You know, it's kind of the YouTube conundrum. People complained about YouTube when they pulled the plug on monetization for smaller channels. But from YouTube's perspective, it was like, you basically should be paying us for hosting your video content on our platform and giving you the ability to be discovered because you wouldn't be able to do that on your own. You know, again, Shadowbinders, not a huge comic, but we did spend three to five hundred dollars on average per month for hosting to handle the traffic that we got. Now we made it back in advertising back then. We made it back in merch sales. We made it back in book sales, mostly at conventions and through Amazon and that sort of thing. But you know, you really need to look at building your own shit. Everybody, like when Twitter, people are so pissed off at Twitter. I'm leaving Twitter. I've got years and years and years of tweets. I need to download them quick. Uh, I, I built my platform on Twitter and now it's crumbling. This happened with Tumblr too. I built my platform on Tumblr and now I got to back all this shit up and I don't know what I'm going to do. Go host your own site. It's hard, isn't it? I mean, I'm not being, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but it's really freaking hard. But I think this is the way things are going to have to go. Everybody expects somebody else to do the legwork, to do the marketing. People, creatives, this is the biggest problem with creatives is that they don't know how to market themselves or they just willfully stay ignorant. They willfully stay ignorant of marketing themselves. They willfully stay ignorant of the business side of things. The most successful web comic creators, the most successful indie comic book creators, indie podcasters, video creator, whatever it is, they learned how to hustle. And I'm not talking screwing people over, but they learned how to have a creative cap and a business cap. And sometimes maybe they're not the best artist or the best whatever, but they have a bigger following because they put more effort into marketing themselves. You know, maybe they became more of a jack of all trades and they didn't really master being a phenomenal artist per se, but you know who they are. Their stuff is in stores at Walmart. You know, there are several YouTubers and even webcomics creators I can think of who have their stuff in Walmart. And they're not what I would consider the best creators. They're not even in the top 5%. I've seen people get books picked up and, you know, and they're not the best. But I guarantee you they're making more money than you are. And they had to, you know, switch their hats. And people don't want to do that. I'm not dunking on these creators. It is a kick to the gut, I'm sure, when you were depending on that revenue and then they're just like, yep, sorry, you're not worth it. You know, the, this happened with Maker Studios. I remember they, they cut a bunch of people loose at Maker and people were like, oh, I lost all my income. But then I'm like, you look at it and you're like, you were probably making less than like $200 a month, you know, on this for the amount of time. It's like, you gotta, you gotta think of a better way to do it. Web Comics Hub. Webtoon ending the creator reward program is good. All those Canvas creators were getting too comfy being able to afford food and pay rent. They need to get it together and stop taking handouts from the poor, hardworking, giant corporation that profits off their work. 
I don't disagree with this sentiment, but I would say that in some cases, when it comes to being a content creator, creators put themselves in the position. Creators offer themselves up as being prey. Like, I think it's good to use a platform like YouTube to, to get your, you know, to build your platform, to get your stuff out there, whatever. I don't think it's good to rely solely on YouTube or solely on TikTok or solely on Instagram or solely on Twitter. You know, the list goes on and on and on. How many popular web comics, you know, got snapped basically because of Tumblr and people leaving Tumblr? You know, did they migrate to their own sites? Did they spend money to promote their stuff? You know, I'm not trying to be a dick about it, but we've done it. You know, we've done it multiple times. We were doing it before YouTube and we'll continue to do it after YouTube. If you want to get your stuff made, you find a way to do it. You will find a way to do it. And that might mean you spend more time on the business side of things than drawing. You know, in our case, like with, with Crimson Brand, we had to hire an artist to go do it because I don't have time to draw it and basically keep everything else running that gives us the platform to be able to sell the comic, you know, and, and you've got to think like that. And artists don't think like that. a lot of creators don't think like that. And they wind up in situations like this, you know? Um, so here we go. Webtoon established the creator reward program in 2018 to supplement their newly established ad revenue sharing program in order to qualify for the program, the creators had to be approved for the ad revenue sharing program and must update at least once a month. The rewards are paid based on the number of views the series receives in a month, 100 at 40,000 views, and the highest at 1,000 for 1.5 million. That's actually lower than it was when we were there. We were getting $1,000 to $1,500 for like 40, 50,000 views. So they dropped it because they basically figured the ad revenue would compensate you. But now the ad rates are dropping off too. And they probably are paying this ad. What's probably going on is this money came from their overall uh, ad take for the entire site. So bigger comics were basically paying for smaller comics to be there. Again, like YouTube. And now the ad rates are dropping. This is what's happening. During the pandemic, Webtoon extended the program and was active. Uh, until now, according to creators, the reward program was more reliable than the ad revenue program. That's true when we were there, yeah. Uh, for some, like Obelis, who wrote the recloseted lesbian, the loss of the program means losing around $800 to $1,000 a month. Um, again, that's true. We This is a different version of the program we were in, but we did make reliably about $1,000 to $1,500 a month off of reruns, in our case. And it was worth it to put this stuff up there because it's like it's passive income. Like, yeah, I'm not going to turn down an extra thousand dollars a month. You know, I don't have to do anything. Uh, the other avenue for Webtoon creators is through the ad revenue sharing program. The downside to this program is creators generate revenue from ad displays on the series. On 2020, Webtoon paid creators 100% of the net revenue due to financial hardships many creators experience. Well, that's, that's decent of them. They didn't have to do that. The revenue support reverted to its original 50% in July of 2021. Creators on Webtoon allegedly do not have a line of sight as to how well their webcomic is performing. Uh, in September, Webtoon posted an announcement promising more transparency for their originals on the performance of their works. As of this article's publication, this only applies to originals and not Canvas creators. Originals are those that are paid to be there, right? Uh, many Webtoon creators are considering moving to other platforms such as Global Comics and Tapas. Tapas was in really bad shape for a while. We actually interviewed them when they first started, and they actually came to the U.S. before Webtoon, but uh, they got sold. Look, all this stuff is supported by ads, and the ads are, the ads are crumbling. Uh, Global Comics uses a paywall system. Tapas pays its creators through the ad revenue and support programs. They've got like, they had like coins or something. I don't know. It's confusing. They take 30% of ad revenue with a qualification that creators must have a minimum of hundred subscribers in order to activate the program. According to Webtoon, the platform has paid its Eng English language creators over 27 million since 2020. Webtoon has yet to reveal what the tipping system will look like. So basically they're putting the onus back on the readers, which always pisses me off. So I guess my feeling there is if they're putting the onus on the readers, and you're basically working for tips anyway. Why not just put it on your own website? Why do you need Webtoon at all? You know, I, I, I'm just, again, being objective. Like, wouldn't it be better to build a following on your own little corner of the Internet, have complete control over that 
and not have to worry about the whims of some corporation deciding to change their revenue program. At least you're getting a heads up. They're giving people a couple of months notice. Now, this is uh, another creator pulling their comic off a of Webtoon, Leanne uh, Krejcik, Krejcik, pulling uh, Let's Play Season 4 from Webtoon. Again, financial reasons, I think. Um, there are plenty of reasons as to what caused the rift. Uh, they say, I must report sad news. I will not be returning with season four of Let's Play on Webtoon. This was an incredibly difficult decision and no single event led to it. There have been ongoing difficulties for several years, most of which I can't discuss, nor is this, appro this the appropriate forum. Some concerns include Let's Play being excluded from marketing despite promises to the contrary and placing Let's Play behind an age gate when there are series with far more controversial content that isn't restricted. Uh, are they originals or not though? My representation has voiced these concerns and others to the necessary individuals at Webtoon, but the blame was reflected back at me for incredibly far-fetched reasons. These issues, among many others, have made me feel marginalized. The Webtoon does not value Let's Play or me. On top of this, I've been watching other creators courageously voice their concerns, particularly over the last year, whether it's about the ad campaign that considers our profession a side hustle. Yeah, I remember that. Remember that? They're just like, oh yeah, might as well get paid for comics. It's a side hustle. The pay disparity for uh, LATAM creators or the ongoing lack of transparency and errors in accounting, Webtoon is no longer the right platform for me or Let's Play. Uh, I'm going to continue it once I'm contractually able to do so. So this is an original and uh, she's pulling out for reasons. It doesn't sound like they're necessary, necessarily related to the reasons that other people have for ditching Webtoons. But yeah, I mean, this is just kind of the reality of the situation, guys. You know, everybody got too comfortable, too cozy, uh, putting their stuff on other people's platforms. And now that the chips are down, people are going to find out what these companies actually think of you, that you are basically cows to be milked. And when the milk runs dry or the demand isn't there for the milk, whatever the reason is, you know, you become meat. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.